there's something inside of you that he has to bring to pass. So look around your valley. Look around. The Bible says that there were very, very many bones. Man, I've got a lot of things that I haven't finished. There's a lot of potential in me, God. And God says, I just want you to see it. Restoration comes when God is in the, in the spirit. Takes you to inspect your valley. The valley is the place where you bury your failures, your dreams, your hopes, your aspiration. Next thing God does is God asks you a question. He doesn't ask you a question because he requires you to have knowledge. Because he says his thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways are not your ways. All he is trying to do is he is trying to light a fire under your faith. He's trying to ask you a faith question. He realized it's impossible to please him without faith. faith. So he says that I need to get your faith moving because if I try to stimulate your knowledge, you're going to give me every single excuse in the book while the thing can't happen. So I'm not trying to stimulate what you know. I'm trying to stimulate who you know. I'm trying to stimulate what you believe in. I'm trying to stimulate the concept in your mind about who you think I am. And so we ask the prophet a question. He says, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Can you see the things that you have buried actually happening? Can you see the things that God has said to you when you were a little boy, when you were a little girl? Can you see those things taking place now? Or have these things been so dry and so buried that you do not believe that they can come to pass? Hallelujah. God has to ask you something else. Then God tells the prophet, and I'm going to tell it to you. He says, go prophesy to the dead bones. Right now, I'm about to turn somebody into a prophet in this house. I'm about to turn somebody into a prophetic monster up in here, up in here. Your dead dreams need to be prophesied too. You see, God is looking at you and saying, listen, I have the power to breathe on your bones, on your dreams, on your aspiration, on your hopes. But I need you to prophesy. I need you to start to speak it right now, right now in the spirit. Come on, church, let's turn this into a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Start to prophesy. Hallelujah. Start to say, God, I'm the head and not the tail. Father, you said that all things that I lay my feet on, Lord God, shall become mine. Father, you said that you'll give me the good land, houses I haven't built, wells I didn't dig, vineyards I didn't Hallelujah. God, you said it to Sarah and she laughed, but you brought it to pass. God, you said you're not a structure of person. Thank you, Jesus. It's a deal for Abraham. I'm the seed of Abraham. So why don't you do it for me? God, I believe it. I'm just going to prophesy it to my house. I'm not going to let the devil steal my God said, I'll 
turn your gray hair into black hair. I'll give you back the Coke bottle shape if you want it. I'll restore the years that the canker worm has stolen. Because all I need you to do is look on the inside of what's dormant and begin to prophesy. Number five, he says the time of revival is when God with his restorative compassion, praise God, opens his mouth and breathes on your dead dreams. God is a restorer. I'm going to get it to you later. But if you understand God as who he is, he's a creator, he's a provider, and he's a restorer. There's some people who preach crazy stuff. I heard this brother preach, I won't say his name, because many of you watch him on TV and you give him money. But he said that, listen, I'm, I don't need a breakthrough that I've broken through with Jesus. And part of that is true. But part of this word that God gives us, a restorative word, is so that we, in the pitfalls and in the consequence pits of life, have the ability to climb out. Jesus spoke some things in the spirit that I am manifesting in the natural. He has given me the tools. He has given me the ladder to climb out of my natural disasters. So it's silly for me to pretend like they don't exist. It's silly for me to look at something and not realize, hey, listen, I'm really standing in a pit and I need to get myself out. So I'm just trying to preach to some people who realize that there are some mountains to climb. Praise God. And God is just trying to get you in climbing mode. Tell somebody, brush the dust off your greatness. <laughs> the climbing mode saint is a saint, and I preached this last week in my church, and I'm almost finished, preaches it from a position of, listen, you start in gardenic existence. You start in Eden, but I'm trying to take you to kingdom. Amen, amen. I don't know if you got that. He says, he says, I start you in Eden, but what I'm trying to do with you is I'm trying to take you to kingdom. In the garden, there's some things that you don't need in the garden. Two things, specifically. There's a few, but I'll give you two. In the garden, all you need are implements of husbandry. All you need in the garden is a shovel. In, in the garden, you don't have to prophesy. And in the garden, you don't need weapons. But when you get to kingdom, when you get to kingdom, you've got to put off the things that you are using in the garden. Garden Christianity isn't the kind of Christianity we need right now in the kingdom. The kingdom Christian realizes that this thing is about warfare. The kingdom Christian realizes that when God promotes you, it's warfare, baby. When God took Moses out of Midian, he sent him to go deal with a pharaoh. When God promoted Joshua, he sent him to go deal with Jericho. When God promoted Samson, he sent him to go deal with 1,000 Philistines by himself. When God called Saul, he sent him to go deal with the Ammonites. When God called David, he sent him to go deal with a 10-foot child. Kingdom ain't no show. Hallelujah. When God promotes you to a kingdom level, baby. It's time to put on a fighting mentality. It's time to change the way that you operate. The Bible is trying to speak to you and trying to tell you to do it a little different. Joel said it. He said in Joel 3 and 9, he says that garden mentality has got to change, but it, garden mentality don't work here. He says, proclaim among the nations, prepare for war. He says, rise the warriors. Let the fighting men draw near and attack. Beat the plowshares into swords. Turn your pruning hooks into spears. Throw away your shovel. Let the weakling say, ah! and Judah, and out of those two sticks, I'm going to make one nation. 